Hello, this is Explore Your Roots. Uh, this episode today is going to highlight a Mary Ann Armstrong, who is an ancestor on my dad's side of the family. We are going to run through her life and try to give everyone a better understanding of who she really was. All right. This week's research consisted of going through records on genealogy websites and looking at other historical documents. I had to sift through quite a bit of records as I discovered that a good handful of them were mumbled up on these websites and some records were attached to the wrong people. Nevertheless, I was able to find some very interesting and fun stories. There is also a book titled Pioneer Women of Faith and Fortitude that has a short bio of Marianne that was very helpful. So I am related to Marianne Armstrong through my dad's side of the family. So my connection to her starts with me, then goes to my dad, then his dad, my grandpa Wilford, then his mom, Barbara Allen, then her mom, Barbara, then her mom, Mary, and then her mother, Elizabeth, then through her father, Azahil. Then we finally get to his mom, who is Mary Ann Armstrong. So Mary Ann Armstrong is my sixth great grandmother. Mary Ann Armstrong was the second youngest child of 11 children born to Azahil Armstrong and Elizabeth Nelson. She was born in the town of Clinton in New York and the year in which she was born is a bit disputed, some saying she was born in 1775, and others saying in 1784. However, all records indicate that she was born on September 22nd, and more of them lean towards the 1784 date. The Armstrong family had deep roots in New York, and they had lived in the area since their pilgrim ancestors arrived in the 1600s. Not too much is known about her childhood, but we do know that her father and family were well off and that he owned a lot of land along the Hudson River in Dutchess County, as well as other properties around New York, including a property in Hyde Park that was bought and owned by the family of the future president, Franklin D. Roosevelt. We also know that she grew up in a big family, being one of the youngest, and likely had a close relationship with her siblings and family. We also know that she had several cousins, uncles, and other family members that fought and died during the Revolutionary War. Mary Ann was born during the heat of the Revolutionary, and so we can therefore assume that she grew up in a kind of atmosphere and environment of revolution and freedom. When Mary Ann came into adulthood, she met a Richard Thorne, also from New York, and they were eventually married on September 1st, 1806, in Clinton, New York. After their marriage, some records show that they moved to Pennsylvania, and others showing them moving to Cayuga, New York. In both scenarios, they moved away from the area where both their families had deep roots, and it is unknown exactly why it is, but maybe we can assume that it was due to prospects of greater opportunity. Marianne Armstrong and her new husband, Richard Thorne, were very prolific and had 11 children, where all but one made it to adulthood. Philip, the first of their children, was born in 1807, followed by Asahil in 1808, whom I come through. Elizabeth was next born in 1810, and Joseph was after her in 1811. Then in 1814, Alfred was born, and he was the only child to die at a young age of two. Mary was the next, born in 1816, followed by Abner in 1819, and then Abigail in 1821. Two years later, in 1823, William was born, and later that same year, Lydia Ann was born. Richard Jr. was born in 1825, and the last child, Methedable, was born in 1828. So all 11 children were born over a 21-year time span. Sometime in the mid to late 1830s, Marianne and her husband met some missionaries and began their religious journey. 
Unfortunately, Mary Ann and her husband Richard had disagreements, and neither one could shake or convince the other as to their own beliefs. This led to them separating, and around 1839, Mary Ann and her ten living children moved to Nauvoo, Illinois to be closer to their religious community, and her ex-husband Richard moved, remarried, and left for California. The family enjoyed their time in Nauvoo, but as their community grew, persecution because of their faith also grew strong, especially in Nauvoo. So, not long after settling, they had to pick up and leave Nauvoo and move to Mount Pisgah, Iowa, and then on to Winter Quarters, Iowa. In Iowa, the rest of their community were already leaving to immigrate to Salt Lake City, Utah, and so the Armstrong family decided to do so as well. Marianne's son Joseph was a skilled blacksmith, so he helped make several large carts for the entire family so they could travel out to Utah. On June 9, 1853, the family joined a group of 282 people, 70 wagons, 27 horses, 480 cattle, 154 sheep, and two mules charged by Daniel C. Miller and John W. Cooley. Somewhere along the way, the captains decided that the group was too large to make good progress, so they divided it into two separate groups that continued to travel west, being usually only days or hours away from each other. The two companies eventually arrived in Salt Lake City on June 9, 1853, having a pretty calm and hassle-free journey west. After reaching Salt Lake City, Mary Ann Armstrong settled near her children in Salt Lake and spent most of her time working as a nurse and midwife going house to house, helping with newborn babies. Only three years after reaching the Salt Lake Valley, on March 7, 1856, Mary Ann Armstrong passed away. Her exact burial location is unknown, but she has a headstone memorial together with her ex-husband Richard, it is said that she never remarried because she never forgot her old husband Richard, even though they disagreed about religion and he had moved on and remarried. Mary Ann was a loving mother and found joy in serving up until the last days of her life. I think and see Mary Ann as a strong example of dedication, sacrifice, and resilience. It must have been hard to leave her family's land that they had lived on for centuries in New York. And it must have been harder to stand up for what she felt is true, even though others, including family, disagreed. It must have been such a hard sacrifice, after separating from her spouse, to take up ten children and move to a completely different state and eventually make a grueling months-long journey out west to an entirely new place. What an example of service she is, to work hard as a nurse helping the helpless until her last living day. I hope that we can learn from Mary Ann's experience and grow a little more. I hope you all enjoyed this episode, and I again encourage you all to learn more about your own ancestors and share the cool and interesting stories you learn. And don't forget to share and like this video, subscribe to our channel here on YouTube and on Apple Podcasts to learn more about history and other cool stories.